Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Chaf, Lamed, Mem, Yom, Samech, Ein, Pei, Fe, Tzadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sin, Tav, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub. As always, it's a wonderful pleasure to be with you again. Thank you for your continued encouragement and thanks for our series and all of us can't thank you enough. It's just not, it's not only me, but all of us who work on this series are very, very moved and touched by the fact that so many of you take the time to be in touch with us and tell you how you're studying Hebrew with us here, how it complements what you're doing in, in synagogues, how many of you who are not Jewish just love the opportunity to actually learn how to read Hebrew and that understanding what so many of the words mean and what the Hebrew roots are has given you so much of a feel for the language and so much more of a sense of how Jewish values are conveyed through the language of Hebrew. All of us are very, very touched and I'm very, very appreciative. On this sort of abbreviated lesson, I want to deal with a word and I want to use it as a practice for you to see if once again you can look at a Hebrew word recognize how many vowels are in that Hebrew word, break the word into syllables, and then pronounce it, and then at the end I'll give you a sense of what the word means. So let's put our word of the day up on the screen for you to see. Take a look at this word. How many vowels are in this word? And hopefully you've said three. There are three vowels in the word. The first vowel is under the letter kuf, correct. The second vowel is under the letter shin, correct. And the third vowel is after the letter nun, correct. There are your three vowels. And if there are three vowels in this word, how many syllables are in this word? Three is correct. Please remember, there's always a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables in a Hebrew word. Always a one-to-one -one correlation. Now what about the dalid and what's under the dalid? That of course is the shiva, mitsuyan. People ask me by the way what mitsuyan means. Mitsuyan means in English excellent. So if I say to you mitsuyan it means you're doing wonderfully, excellently. Mitsuyan is excellent. So take a look now. What's under the Dalid? A shva is correct. And what do we know about a shva? A shva is never counted as a vowel. Mitsuyan. Please remember, a shva is either silent, in which case it always ends, or what's said to close a syllable, and we add the letter above the silent shva to the preceding letter and vowel, extending a syllable by the letter over the silent shva. Or a shva is pronounced. And when it's pronounced, it's pronounced i, short i, as in the word fish. But even when the shva is pronounced, it's still not a vowel, and it's never counted as a vowel. In this sense, Hebrew is very different than English. Every time we hear in our ear a vowel sound, we call it a vowel and would count it as a vowel. Not true in Hebrew. In Hebrew, vowels tend to be quarter notes. But a shva is basically a grace note. A grace note. And it is not a vowel. It, if it's pronounced, the shva leads into the actual syllable. A pronounced shva always begins a syllable by leading into the syllable where the letter and the vowel are present. A pronounced shva will always be followed 
by a letter and a vowel after the pronounced schwa, which helps complete the syllable. Now the question is, when is a schwa pronounced? When is a schwa pronounced? And again, here's your hint. A pronounced schwa always begins a syllable. And we've learned three circumstances when a schwa is always pronounced. One, a schwa is always pronounced if it's under the first letter of a word, obviously, since the first letter begins the first syllable of a word. So obviously, whenever you see a schwa under the first letter of a word, it's pronounced. Number two, if there are two schwas in a row, the second of two schwas in a row is pronounced. And again, this is obvious, since if there are two schwas, the first schwa is silent, it must end a syllable, so the next schwa must begin the new syllable, must be under the letter that begins a syllable, and a schwa at the beginning of a syllable is always pronounced. So the second of two schwas in a row is always a pronounced schwa, i, as in the word fish. And number three, a schwa is always pronounced if it's under a letter with a dagesh. And you remember a dagesh is a dot inside virtually any Hebrew letter. Not on top of a letter, but inside of a letter. And why is a schwa pronounced under a dagesh? In reality, it's something you don't need to know. Just know this. You see a letter with a dagesh in it, a schwa under it, the schwa is pronounced. But if you're interested in the nuance of Hebrew grammar, here's the reason why a schwa under a letter with a dagesh is pronounced. A dagesh technically doubles the letter. In the reality of Hebrew, spoken or written otherwise, we no longer double the letter. We don't even pronounce it twice. But technically, in terms of Hebrew grammar, a dagesh doubles the letter. And if a dagesh doubles the letter, it also doubles the schwa under the letter. So in essence, we have two schwas. And we've just learned, whenever there are two schwas in a row, the second schwa is always pronounced. And therefore, under a dagesh, the second schwa, which we imagine is there, is pronounced. And that's technically why a schwa under a dagesh is pronounced. As far as I'm concerned, you want to know the reason, that's the reason. But the key thing for you to know is, you see a letter with a dagesh in it, the schwa under it is pronounced. So, a schwa is pronounced under the first letter of a word, the second of two in a row, and under a letter with a dagesh in it. And when it's pronounced, it's pronounced i, short i as in the word fish, but even when it's pronounced, the shiva is never counted as a vowel. So now let's go back to our word of the week. Take a look at this word and tell me whether the shiva under the dalid is silent or pronounced. And if you said pronounced, you are correct. Why? Because it's under a letter with a dagesh in it. The dalid so, if the shva under the dalit is pronounced, what is the entire first syllable? And what I want you to try to do is look at this word and see if you can break the word into three syllables. If you had to draw a line between two letters separating the first syllable from the rest of the word, after which letter would you draw the line? And if you drew it after the kuf, you would be correct. The first syllable is ki, mitsuyan, ki. The dalit obviously has a pronounced schwa, so it begins the next syllable. We would not add the dalit to the ki as the first syllable. The first syllable is simply ki, mitsuyan. And now where would you draw a second line? to divide the second syllable from the third syllable. After which letter would you draw a line to divide this word into three syllables? You said after the shin, 
you would be correct. And there you see the second syllable. It begins with the Dalid, which has a pronounced schwa. The schwa only opens a syllable. You still must need a vowel to create a full syllable. And the vowel is the kamatz under the shin. And the second syllable would therefore be pronounced disha, mitsuyan, disha. The first syllable is ki. The second syllable is disha. And the third syllable is pretty easy. The third syllable is simply nu, mitsuyan, the nun with the shuruk after it. And there you see the three syllables of this word, ki, disha, nu. Let's put the word together and can you pronounce this entire word? Kideshanu is correct, Mitsuyan. By the way, many people hear this word, have heard this word their entire lives. It's in very, very many uh, Hebrew Jewish blessings, but they very often say Kideshanu, adding the Dalit to the key as if the Dalit had a silent Shva under it. But now you know. The shva under the dalit is pronounced, and therefore the first syllable is ki, the second syllable is disha, the third syllable is nu, and the word is actually pronounced ki dishanu. Incidentally, if you say ki dishanu, there is no shva police that will come and bother you. You can say any Hebrew word any way you want, but if you want to understand the correct pronunciation, it is ki dishanu. You'll also notice there is an accent mark under the shin, right near the kamatz, which tells us that this word is pronounced kideshanu. The accent is on the disha, kideshanu, mitsuyan. And that's how you read this somewhat complicated three-syllable Hebrew word, and it's all about understanding how to handle the shva. And what does the word kideshanu mean? Well, remember, the easiest way to translate a word is to look at it without the dots and dashes, without the vowels, without what's called the nikudot in Hebrew. So let's take all the vowels and dots out of this word, and the word looks like this. Now, do you remember what the root of this word always has to do with? Here's the root. Kuf, Dalid, Shin. You've seen this before. Do you remember what the root Kuf, Dalid, Shin always has to do with? And if you remember it is holiness, you are correct. Kuf, Dalid, Shin always has to do with holiness. And I'll tell you, the word is a verb. Now how would you make a verb in English out of the idea of holiness. A verb having to do with holiness. And if you say, make holy, you're correct. Make holy. Or there's another way of saying it that is more poetic, sanctify. This root as a verb either means to make holy or to sanctify. And now if I tell you that this verb is in the past tense, how would you translate it? Made holy or sanctified, mitsuyan. And in this word, the suffix at the end of the word, nun shuruk, nu, tells us whom was made holy or sanctified. And maybe you remember that nu as a suffix always has to do with the first person plural. First person plural. And I imagine some of you are excellent in English grammar and some of you never learned English grammar and if you did, you forgot it a long time ago. But the first person plural in the objective case is us. First person plural, us. And so, the word you see here on the screen means made us holy 
or sanctified us. Kiddushanu, Kiddushanu, made us holy or sanctified us. And now we put the nikudot back into the word and you can see it and read it yourselves. Kiddushanu, and the word Kiddushanu means made us holy or sanctified us. And here's one more Hebrew word. How many vowels in this word? One is correct because a shva is never counted as a vowel, even when a vowel sound is added to the shva. Under the aleph is something called a chataf patach, a pronounced shva with a patach next to the shva to give the shva a little bit of added body or oomph. But it's still a shva. And it's never counted as a vowel. So there's only one vowel in this word, the segol under the shin. So how many syllables are in this word? One is correct. Can you pronounce this Hebrew word? Asher is correct. Beautiful. Asher. And asher in Hebrew is who, that, or which. It's the correlative pronoun in Hebrew. Who, that, or which. So how would you translate these two words together? This two-word Hebrew phrase, asher kiddushanu. And if you say, who made us holy or who sanctified us, you'd be 100% correct, mitsuyan. Asher Kiddushanu, who made us holy. And in Jewish blessings, this refers, of course, to what God does. God makes us holy in Jewish blessings. And on our next lesson, we'll show you how in Jewish blessings, God indeed makes us holy. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS, a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more will be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Love, Sein,